I'm gonna put a couple lines right here because human beings love to separate things even though we've had wars over them. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today let's talk about making plates, and making plates actually isn't as hard as you might think it is, especially if you've already made a bowl first. But there is some prerequisite information you need to know before you actually start making a plate. Number one, mainly, is that you're going to need some bat pins, and you're also going to need a bat. If you don't know what these are, or you don't have them, I've already made a video on that, I will link it down below for you. This probably doesn't make a lot of sense to anyone who hasn't made a plate before, but essentially when you make a plate, what you're doing is you're smushing down clay into a flat surface, or a plate-like surface, onto your wheel, and it's very difficult to take that big floppy flat disc of clay off of your wheel and not morph it. So it's a good safe bet that you're gonna need a bat. Now making a plate is actually not that difficult once you get a hold of it. Plus it's actually really fun to just smoosh down clay after you really learn how to make it. But the way I do it is a little bit different from the way some people do it. Our first step is to center our clay and make sure it's nice and low to the ground of the plate. You guys remember when you were first making your first bowl or your first cup and it was extremely hard to pull your fingers in and really know how far to pull out and start pulling your wall up? Well, you really don't have to worry about any of that while making a plate. Because when you make a plate, you really don't have to worry about the inside of your clay. You're going to be smushing this all the way down into a really flat surface. So here's what you're going to do. Go ahead and get your operative hand. If you're right handed, it's your right. Your left is your left. And go ahead and wet that hand up. Now the part that you really want wet is the blade of your fist right here. Kind of like if you're karate chopping something, except for you just want this bladed part right here to be really nice and wet. Put a little water on here, smack it real good. And I'm right handed, so I'm doing it with my right hand. Everything in between these two spaces is real wet, the blade of my fist and the clay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my fist right here, I'm gonna put my hand on top of my fist, and I'm gonna push down and just crouch as far as I can down while the wheel is spinning. And try really hard not to wobble your fist anywhere. If you do, you're gonna end up making extra bumps inside your clay like how I did right there. Don't be afraid to lean down. You're just gonna push with both of your hands as far as you can. And yes, this part of the clay right here is going to move up here because the clay will expand and you will end up touching dry parts of your forearm or this blade of your fist right here. If that happens, there is no shame in stopping the wheel, re-wetting your hand, and going right back to work like you just were. You're gonna keep pushing down just like this. And sooner or later, you're going to have a nice flat form like this, but we're not done yet. This is not the final product of your plate, although this was the easiest part because you essentially just Hulk smashed a plate downwards. You still have to measure the bottom. You remember when we did that video on how to make a bowl and we ended up measuring the space in between the clay and the bottom of the wheel head? Well, you're gonna have to do that again here with your pin tool. The only difference is, you're gonna want about double the space that was left. So let's say we were making a bowl and we were measuring after we opened up and we want about this much space for a bowl. Now that we're making a plate, we want about this much space. It's almost double the amount of space that you had with your bowl. And you want this because the plate's gonna be extra, extra thin at the bottom because you're essentially making a flat base. Imagine this had walls right here. This is basically just a flat base of a bowl, but without the walls. You're just making it extra big. After you've gotten to this point and you've smushed all the clay down, it is now your job to get a couple fingers and run them across the body back and forth. The way you do this is you take a couple fingers, you start from the outside, and you keep constant pressure. I like to put my hands together to really stabilize my hands. Slowly, slowly push in towards the middle of your clay body, and sooner or later you'll reach the very middle of the plate where it's gonna make this little nipple, just like this. But don't worry, it doesn't stay there. If you go all the way to the middle, and right when you get to the middle, pull upwards, it goes away very easily. Most potters do this in order to realign the clay platelets, and it really helps without getting those S cracks in your plate. And trust me, you're gonna get about double the chance of getting S cracks in your plate if you don't really do this. Now you don't have to do it with your fingers, you can always do it with a sponge, just make sure that sponge isn't too wet. 
All I'm doing here is I'm really trying to condense the clay down into a nice flat surface. See, clay technically is made of these little platelets, and these platelets slide together the more that you condense them down into a solid structure. So all I'm doing is I'm really trying to compact them in together so that I get a less chance of having an S crack or some kind of Z crack or pick any letter of the alphabet. I don't want no cracks. The more that I do this, the more clay will bind together into a more solid structure. It's kind of like wedging your clay, except for you're doing this and condensing them in a plate formation. Potter tip slash kind of a cheat code. A metal rib comes insanely in handy here because if you are done condensing your clay platelets with your fingers, you can always take this side of your metal rib, push it down so it flexes just like this on the clay body as it spins, and if you put enough pressure, it will automatically start to really flatten that body out and it cleans off any bumps you might have. So let's imagine you didn't keep your fingers too straight and now you have like these kind of bumps right here just like this. You can always take that metal rib, push it down just hard enough, and it will just gently erase those little bumpy mistakes that you had made. Very, very easily. But remember, once you get to the middle, lift up really quickly. If you go anywhere past this point, this will gouge into your plate. So use this very carefully. As a bonus, you can always take the edge of this and create whatever patterns you want inside of your stuff, just like this. You can create lines, you can make little decorations, you can pretty much do anything on the wheel with the metal rib. And if you don't like it, again, you can just erase it by pushing enough pressure with this arced side of your metal rib. So you measured the thickness from the piece to the wheel and it's perfect. So we've done the first two steps. We've measured the bottom, it's perfect thickness, and we've flattened our plate out to a nice, neat, nice, flat little plate here. This is the part that kind of reminds me of making a bowl, because now you've just made a base, and all you have to do now is take your fingers or a sponge or whatever you might have in your hand and push on the outer wall of that plate, and the clay will move upward because you're putting pressure on this. The clay must move somewhere else because your hands are more solid than the clay. They're much thicker and denser. So once you do this, you just have to pull a little tiny wall, just like this. And you don't have to make it too big. You don't have to make it super small. Just pull a little tiny wall, and what you have here is a very large cylinder. But Dante, I already had a plate. What am I doing now? You didn't make a plate, you just made a flat surface. This is gonna be a plate. The only step you have left to do now is to get this little flange, put a little bit of water on it, and push this way with your fingers. Push out just like you were making a bowl, except for instead of making a curve, your job is to push it out way beyond the point of a curve. This would kind of be a small bowl looking thing, but you want it past the point of a bowl. You want that nice edge of a plate. So you're gonna take it all the way down, just like this. And look, now it's starting to look more and more like a plate. This again is where the metal rib really comes in handy because you can again take this side of your metal rib and push down just like this and it will create the perfect curvature for the end of your lip of your plate. It's very, very easy to do and all you really need to do is make sure that this part here has an upward curve, this part's flat, and this part is flat and you're pretty much done. And look, there you go, you have made your first plate. Now that you've made the form of your plate, you can pretty much do whatever you want to it. You can make a little spiral right here. I like to put a little lip right here, just in case. It seems to be a lot more aesthetic and people seem to gravitate towards it. And the glaze kind of plays around on this little spiral and this little gully right here. So I like to do that as well. Please note that you really aren't taking your metal rib and pushing the very, very edge of the plate down, the lip. As it were, what you're really doing is you're taking the space in between the bottom of the plate and the lip and pushing it downwards in this direction right here. If you push down, straight down, you end up flattening it and it'll become part of the plate. If you push up here, this will end up flopping over. What you're really doing is you're looking at the space in between the two and pushing a diagonal angle towards this. You're trying to make a very small crux. I like to think about a plate in three different sections. This right here is the bottom of the plate. And you can denote it by putting a little line right here. And this is the entirety of the bottom of the plate. And then you have this middle part right here. This middle part here needs to be cruxing upwards a tiny bit. Just needs to be looped and curved upwards just so that it can support itself because this part right here is probably going to be the thinnest part of your plate. So what you want to do is put this and then it comes upwards just like this. This is one of the reasons that I really like to put these lines in here. It really helps separate what the bottom, the middle, and the edge are. And there you go, you have made your first plate. The only thing left to do now is to take it right off of the wheel, and we can do that very easily because we have a bat, 
and now it's safe and sound. You don't have to struggle from taking it off of the wheel because you used a bat. Too many Potter tips! After you've made your plate, go ahead and take your wire tool and just cut underneath it just like this. This helps create a really nice separation in between the bat and the plate itself, and it's much easier to take off when you're done. Too many times have I had students try and jerk their plate off and almost ruin it because they didn't make a preemptive cut beforehand. This is going to dry and naturally come off of the bat, but to help it along, making that preemptive slice really, really helps. You don't have to put any water, you don't have to slide it off or anything, all you have to do is make one little cut to help it separate later on when it dries, and just take it right off and put it on your shelf, and you're all done. So let's go through the steps one more time. And now comes the part where we have three different sections. Here's the bottom, here's the middle part, and here's the edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my metal rib, push it right down in the middle part right there, and now we have a really nice self-supporting curvature to make sure that edge doesn't fall. And there we go, that took all of like three minutes. I will say it is massively important to make sure you wedge your clay really well and make sure that all your clay is really aligned before you put it on the wheel. Otherwise, you're going to have a really wobbly plate. Even if that's your style, it makes it much harder to work with a plate in general because you're asking the clay to move along a really flat surface. And so you're going to get to see the entirety of the inside of your clay. And I really want you guys to see what I'm talking about with the separation. This right here would be the base level. This right here would be the middle part. And this is the edge. So when I'm getting my metal rib, so when I'm getting my metal rib, what I'm really doing is I'm putting this down right at this part and making sure that it really, really stays down. This part's already flat. This part can't go too low or else it'll fall down. This part is really the self-supporting curvature. And I use the metal rib right here because this part right here really creates that self-supporting curvature as long as you know exactly where to push it. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. I really hope this helped you out. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes. And I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. This just reminds me of Naruto so hard. I can't, I can't do anything without thinking about anime.